Okay, everybody, we are looking at curved mirrors for the chapter 17 review. All I'm going to do on this is I'm going to draw our uh, five cases of the concave ray diagrams, and then I'm going to draw the sixth case, which is a convex ray diagram. All right, remember how I number these. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the left. This will be case one for an object that is located there. Case 2 will be located on C, the center of curvature. Case 3 will be in between C and F. 4 will be on F. 5 will be inside of F. So there's just going to be a progression, and we're just going to work through them, cases 1 through 5, and we're going to work our way closer and closer to the mirror. I'll remind you, since I kind of glossed over that, that these mirrors we could treat as a large circle here okay so we are just grabbing a portion of a circle and there's a mirror on it so C is the center of curvature it is associated with the distance the radius of the mirror the radius of curvature so it's from the face of the mirror out to the to where the center would be and then halfway in between so this is one half of the radius you get to F the focal point and the focal length would be the length associated with going from the mirror out to that location in space which is also half the radius so those are those two locations C and F okay so this is gonna be case one here's my object I'm really only gonna draw two different rays to do this the first ray goes in parallel, so that's my attempt to draw parallel, and then it's going to reflect out, angle in equals angle out, off this curved mirror, and it's always going to go through the focal. Okay, so it goes through F right there. Here's C. So that's my first ray. The next one goes in through the focal, so it goes like that, and then it reflects out parallel to the principal axis. So what I get from this is I get my brand new image right there. And I can say that for case one, the image is located between C and F. It is inverted because it's upside down. Given that it's inverted, that makes it a real image. I would be able to actually project that image onto a piece of paper and it also is smaller than the original object so it would have a magnification that is less than one or in between zero and one making it smaller we would also tag that magnification though with a negative sign to indicate that it's inverted it's case one by the way for this first one I'll just mention that you do of course have all these other possible rays so there's one that goes out here and it's going to go through that same spot. There's a ray that's going to go here, and it's going to go through that arrowhead. There are an infinite number of rays that I could draw. It's just that notice that this ray does not go through the focal point. This ray did not go through the focal point. The only ones that are going to go through the focal point are the ones that come in parallel. So that was this original red one that'll go through the focal and then the one that I went in with the green I went in first through the focal will leave parallel so on all these cases I'm just focusing on the easy rays to do the easy rays to draw are the ones that have some sort of parallel to the principal axes associated with them alright let's do case two so here's my object my little arrow just uh, the simplest object we can conceive of and I have two rays that I'm gonna draw first is in parallel and out through the focal then I'm gonna have in through the focal and out parallel now my picture is not you know given that I'm not using a straight edge for this um, you'll have to forgive me that that's not perfect but what we get in this particular case an image so my image is always down here right 
I'm using blue for my image. My image is the exact same size, so it's has a magnification of actually negative one because it's inverted, which makes it a real image, and it is located at the same position as the object, so it's actually located at C, the center of curvature. That is case two. Maybe I'll put what case I'm working on up here as I go. Case three, I'm gonna have my arrow hanging out in between C and F. Whenever you draw these, don't put it too close over here. It causes problems because it would get pushed way far out, way far beyond the page. But let's go ahead and do my ray diagram. So in parallel, out through the focal. Then I'm gonna have in through the focal and out parallel. And where this is supposed to be, and so maybe I should have moved it in even a little bit more than I was saying, my, my object. This is getting larger. It's now bigger. That's a larger arrow. It's outside of C. Okay, there's C. It's further out than C. It's still a real image. And it's inverted. Let me show you what would happen had I put my object there. Notice that the red would be the exact same there would be no difference whatsoever in the red. So my red would continue on going out that way. But when I would go in to make my green one, and this time I'm gonna use blue real quick just to keep it separate, it would go way far down. It would be way down here somewhere. And then it would go out. And so it would be a huge, big old image that's out there. But it is actually nice to, to notice that that red one would be the same. Case four is a situation where I have my object located on F, and this immediately poses a problem for me. Given that both the center and curvature and the focal point are both single points in space, it really is kind of impossible for me to have a two-dimensional or even a three-dimensional object located entirely on F. There's not a whole lot we can do to resolve that. What we do, I suppose, is let's go ahead and say that I have just the tiniest of all possible little arrows that's totally located entirely on F. What I'll do is I'll, I'll show a ray that's gonna go through both the arrowhead and through the focal. It's gonna travel in, and so I guess it has to reflect out parallel. I could draw another one that goes in through this direction. It's still traveling through the arrowhead and through the focal, and it will reflect out parallel. I could do an infinite number of rays that are gonna follow this, this same pattern. And in doing so, I make an observation. No matter what rays I collect over on this side, they are all parallel to one another, and so they will never actually cross. In case four, we say that there is no image. Because there's no image, it really doesn't make much sense for us to talk about things like, is the image upright or inverted? We simply just leave it at that. There's no image that can actually happen when an object is located on the focal point. If you do this in practice, what it means is that things are just blurry. So you'll still get light that comes in and it's gonna find its way to your eyeball eventually. But like I said, it just won't be a focused image. It'll just be very blurry. The last of these cases is another one that causes some trouble with people because I'll go in and put my red one here. My red one is gonna go in parallel and out through the focal. So that one's pretty easy. That one looks the same that it looked as if, you know, I had maybe my my image or excuse me my object way out there it really is the same ray that would have gone through the one that is funny is I go for my green and I want to start up here and I want to make my way through the focal the problem is is that I won't run into the mirror if I treat it like this I'm gonna head off into a different direction and so all you really have to do is you just have to conceptually say, well, I just kind of need to get the ray that is on that line. And really, it's going to cross through the focal first and then out parallel. So it looks like that. My red one had a ray right here. All right, so I put the arrowheads on the reflected rays. 
what we need to do is we need to trace back beyond the reflected rays. That means that I trace back on that reflected ray, and I trace back on that reflected ray, and I find that I have an image. Those light rays are allowed to converge, it's just that they don't converge on this side of the mirror. You can see those things are never going to meet up again, where they can converge is behind the mirror. So that by definition is a virtual image back here. So we have a virtual image. It's upright. It is bigger. So it has a magnification that's greater than one. And we just kind of say it's behind the mirror. And then our last is case convex. So there's really only one way that we can talk about a convex ray diagram. It only has one particular case for it. So I still have my focal point back here. I have my center of curvature back there. Remember, the focal length would be negative. I just kind of want to reinforce that everywhere I can. That because it's behind the mirror, we have to tag it with a negative sign when I have to use my mirror equation, which I'll do on a different review video. But let's just look at the ray diagram. So I go in parallel, just like before, and I go out through the focal. Well, out through the focal would send me into the mirror, which is not something that can happen in real life. But I need to take that path. So I'm going to trace up, and it's going to go that way. You could see that I would still have a nice, pretty law of reflection angle in, theta is equal to angle out, theta, all that good business there. But so that's my first ray diagram. The next one goes in through the focal, so it's going to go this way. And if I could continue on, I would dot, 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 go through the focal. I'm going to erase those dots, though, for a moment, because I don't want to cause confusion on something. But then I'm going to reflect out. And now when I need to find where my image is going to be located, I always need to go back behind the reflected one. So that's going to send me off of that. Go in and I draw my image. Here I have a little arrow. It's hanging out right there. It is a virtual image. It's behind the mirror, so it's a virtual image. It is upright, and it is smaller. So that would have a magnification that's positive, but it would be between 0 and 1. All right. Hope everybody remembers those okay. I will be asking you to draw a couple of those for me. So if you think you got it figured out, let your computer know.